Okay, so a few weeks ago, I was at a flea market, and uh, I picked up this beautiful old Heathkit analog multimeter. And uh, I was able to put some batteries in it and uh, get it working. And uh, I was testing it out, and I quickly noticed that uh, it has a few issues. Um, but it's a really nice little multimeter. Uh, the guy was wanting 20 bucks for it. I talked him down to 15 and I think that's a pretty good price for one of these nice old analog multimeters. Um, I've been wanting one recently. Uh, the first multimeter I've ever used was analog. I just think they're uh, a little more easy to read, uh, a little faster to read, so uh, I've been kind of wanting one for a while, and this one is just perfect for what I'm looking for. Um, so I found I was kind of testing this, and um, against some resistors I have of some known values, like this one's uh, 47 ohms, and if I just put it on R times 1 here, and give that a shot, see that it reads way too low. Uh, that should be reading 47 ohms, which should be about up in here. Also, on the times 100, this should be reading 51, it's 5.1k, and it also reads way too low. So that's uh, at least something wrong with that circuit. Now the interesting thing is if I go to times 10k, here's a 470k, and that should be right up in here. That one's almost dead on. So it seems to affect mostly the times 100 and times 1 part of the circuit. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this apart and uh, just take a look inside here. Okay, so one of the nice things about this multimeter is that it uses batteries that are still available to me. A lot of these really, really old multimeters will use some sort of composite antiquated battery, but thankfully it's just some C, whole C battery and then a couple of double A's. Um, now when I first took this apart and looked at it, I noticed that if we look in here, this resistor right here, precision resistor, does not look very good. It looks like it exploded. And uh, the one next to it here looks like it's pretty pretty badly burned. So um, what I did was I just grabbed a different multimeter I have. So I grabbed another multimeter I have, digital one here, and uh, just testing it in circuit here, we can see that this one is completely blown. There's it's just completely shot, so um, this should be 11.5 ohms. Obviously, it's not working at all. Um, and this one that's burnt next to it, this should be 11.38. And it's actually in spec there. So that one is good, but it's pretty badly burned up, so I just thought I'd go and replace both of those. Uh, this one is completely busted, needs to be replaced, but this one, I just don't like the idea of having a burned resistor in there, so I thought I'd replace that also. Now one of the first things I did when I got this voltmeter, uh, this multimeter, is I went online, I found the manual, downloaded it, and printed it out, and uh, I was looking through it for uh, those resistors, and I found them in the diagram of where they're located, and uh, first pretty quickly able to find out that 11.5 is the one that's blown, and then 11.38 is the one that's burned, and they are part of the ohmmeter circuit. So that's definitely what's wrong with these things. It kind of seems to me like whoever used this in the past, uh, they must have tried to measure some wall current or they plugged it in the wall or something like that and uh didn't realize they were still on ohms and just blew this apart so um i think it's a pretty easy fix um i went on to mauser and i ordered some new precision resistors uh this calls for 
uh, 1%. Uh, so the ones I got are at least 1%. Um, and this is kind of funny to me. This is, uh, there's only two resistors in this box, but uh, they packaged it with just a gigantic container. So I'm kind of curious to see how they actually put it in there. So let's take a look at that. Yeah, so it's a bit overkill with that box, but it's, uh, it's nice they did it anyways. So I've got my replacement 11.3k uh, ohm resistor. I'll replace the 1138 one. And I got my precision 11.5 uh, oh, ohm. And these are supposed to go up to half a watt. Um, and they all said, uh, at least some of these are quarter watt, but uh, it said in their specs that they can handle half watt. So we'll go ahead and uh, prepare to solder these back in. All right, so I'm just gonna see if I can wrestle this blown up resistor out of here. It uh, looks like it's in there pretty well, but um, hopefully we'll get a good stab at it here. Okay, so that didn't put up too much of a fight, which is good. Okay, so I just double checked my schematic and made sure that that's the uh, 11.5. So I'll go ahead and pull this out. It's amazing how much packaging there is just for two of these little guys. And I'll try to solder this back in place here. Okay, so that looks pretty good, and I'll just solder it in place here. Okay, so that one is uh, replaced. Uh, let's move on to the burnt one now. All right, now I'm just gonna plop this burnt up 1138 ohm resistor, hopefully. Actually broke in half, probably due to all the heat and busted up container there. And it's a little burnt up, but I can verify that it is the 1138 one. So I'll just unpack my 1130 uh, resistor here and put that in. It's a little different style than the other one, uh, but this is all they had in stock for the specifications I needed here. But uh, it should work just fine. Well, let's open up these holes again. a bit long, we'll go and trim that off. And we'll just solder this in. Okay, so this should be repaired now. We'll go ahead and pop the case back on and uh, try it out with some known resistors. One other quick note about this multimeter. It does have a very old capacitor in here. I'm not sure if this is a paper one or not. I'm pretty sure it is. Um, so I might replace that eventually. Um, I actually do have a suitable replacement here, but um, I'm guessing this is of pretty high quality. Uh, I haven't really seen a need to replace it yet. Um, well, I might do that in the future, but we'll see what happens. Um, 
it's not really a big deal to take this apart and work on it. So let's go ahead and pop this back together. So that's all back together and the repair should be in place. So it's going to plug in the leads here and uh, we'll give it a shot. So start with the one we know should work was the 10 K there and that should read about 47. It might be actually have adjustment, uh, Well, let's try the uh, 5.1 here. Okay, so that's about right. And let's go down to the 1, and we'll test 47. I think that's also about right. And um, I think there's, it's reading a little off. I think that's because... Uh, I probably need to adjust the ohms here, uh, adjust the scale. Actually, that that's it right there. So we'll just adjust this step to zero. Give us another shot here. So let's try the 47. Yep, that's uh, right on. Let's try the times 100 for the 51. Again, right there. And we'll try the times 10k, and that should read 47. Yeah, that's that's right about there. So, all right, so this was a, a successful repair on this, which is great. I've been wanting one of these uh, for quite a long time. Uh, nice big old stand-up uh, desk multimeter, and um, this one's real nice. It can uh, it can read five uh, five kilovolts. AC or DC. It can read um, up to 15 amps for the ammeter. Uh, so it's pretty pretty versatile, pretty strong little thing. Um, so yeah, I look forward to using this uh, in some of my future projects. So yeah, thanks for watching. This was a nice little repair.